Assalamu alaikum, Ya Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Oh, before you ask the question, funny is that you know when these talks come out, everyone should expect a, a fierce energy is coming. I don't think it was but five minutes from the talk, they were all battling. Kids, ladies, everyone, rah, 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 rah. And this is not even five minutes from the talk. Mm. Yeah. Just let you know that. <laughs> this is real, these, te these teachings are real. There's energy going to come and try everybody and make everything to be fiery, to make everything to be agitated. And all last night we kept saying, be quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. And that was the only thing that nobody could do. So you see how quickly a test comes and how quickly people fail. It's not but even two minutes. Most, most at least you could get through the door and on the way home, not even leaving the center. There are disruptions and, and battles. <laughs> I thought I'd give you some of that trivia, inshaAllah. <laughs> uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Shaykh <laughs> Is there any physical act we should do for down or somethingness in front of people and around people? Ya be humble. <laughs> all of tariqah, <clears throat> all of tariqah teaches that. Be humble, keep your distance, keep yourself in a state of humility, look to the floor, try to practice not being arrogant. If you're a proud person, Look to the, the floor, look to your feet, nazar bar qadam, that our life is about just keeping my, my eyes on my feet, my path and where I'm going in life. Try not to follow the teachings of arrogance and, and uh, bad character and pride and everything is for a different. And if you're already extremely humble and you're extremely quiet and shy, this is not for you. These are for the people who have arrogance. Those people whom are very quiet and shy and intimidated, they need a himma and a zeal. So every medicine is different. This is addressing people who have pride and arrogance which is 99% of people suffering from that reality because of all social media and the push on social media to, to continuously push that reality and push that characteristic upon people, inshaAllah. <clears throat> uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah What do we do if we are labeled evil because we are wearing a taweez? How do we explain to the ignorant? Nothing, stay quiet. You reach high stations, stay quiet. Don't show people what you're wearing, don't show it off to people and then they have to give you comments and just stay quiet, smile. In the past people would act a little bit like balul <laughs> to avoid the, the punishment of the king, his brother was balul. So balul and that's where we get that terminology like balul, like you're like a lulu, you're like, you're like you're gone in your head. And they would purposely act like that to avoid you know people trying to debate them and argue them and, and try to you know say you're doing things wrong. So you just try your best to keep a low profile, don't try to answer, don't try to act like a alim and you're going to now change Wahhabis. They, that's, that's something shaitan has grabbed them and changed them and that's not for us to change. So it's just a matter of keeping our practices humble, nobody knows I'm wearing a taweez, nobody's touching me, what, what, they don't have to know what I'm wearing. So that's just the path of humility. Don't get in debates, don't, don't send things out that you want to discuss with people on, on subjects that you don't know how to discuss, then they'll confuse you on every subject. So our path is just a path of humility. Take our articles and send them out. If they have any questions then you send them the email, help me at Nur Muhammad. So I have no idea how to answer what you're asking me, uh, ask them, help me at Nur Muhammad, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Forgive me for my ignorance, but if we have to submit, then should we ask for nothing in our du'as? <clears throat> we'll put it this way the shaykhs don't ask for anything, but you're not there, so you ask for whatever you want. 
But at some point in time, you, you put into your heart, what am I asking for? If I do my practices, Ya Rabbi grant me faith, grant me good character, grant me humility. Those are you asking for forgiveness, best ask is to ask for forgiveness. So every night, I'm sorry Ya Rabbi forgive me, forgive me, my character was bad. Did I go towards nukht or did I do more towards one? And if, oh I look at all my arguments, all my problems, all my concerns, there was a lot of ones, a lot of ones, a lot of ones, I start to cry and ask for forgiveness, Ya Rabbi please forgive me, forgive me. And once you keep asking for forgiveness and Ya Rabbi grant me good character, grant me Islam, grant me the, the love of Prophet wasallam. Those are, those are not so much asking but when you sit there with like a shopping list, I want this, I need this, I want this, I want this, I want this, this is the teaching, well Allah wants something too. Have you given what Allah wants? So the tariqah comes and begins to teach, be busy yourself with the zikrs, the, the practices, cry on to Allah make istighfar and, and, and put the shopping list away. And once you've satisfied what Allah wants and you've done the practices, you have good character, then you think to myself, well, why do I have to ask Allah If I'm doing all these things, I think Allah knows my condition, ufa'udhu amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bi ibad. With all these zikrs, all these practices, Ya Rabbi you know my whole entire condition, what am I going to ask you for? I think every time I open my mouth it becomes worse. And then they stop asking and they keep meditating and making sujood and crying and Allah knows the condition that they're in. And the condition is something that, that Allah wants. You can ask for najat, a salvation, a release from difficulty and these are all in the awrad of fajr. So you can say it more beautifully by reading Shaykh Nazim's awrad and etiquette. So when you recite the fajr etiquette, it's beyond our comprehension of istighfars and beautific praisings on Prophet and beautific way of asking Allah what we're in need of. By the time me and you try to make something, it's not going to be compar comparable to what Shaykh Nazim put together and formulated by the, the love and the ishq of Prophet So you read the etiquette of the shaykhs at the fajr time, so that, that covers your whole day, inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as salaamu alaykum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you please guide me which crystal would you suggest and please explain how to use it? Not now because we've got too big an audience and that's not something. Right now you can use the, the salt, the Himalayan salt and takes away bad energy, bad character and uh, you can buy those and have that energy around inshaAllah but you can help, help me at Nur Muhammad dot com inshaAllah and, and uh, they can send out some information on the different stones and the powers of the stones, turquoise for the rings, aqiq for the rings because they have an energy from nazar for, for warmth of the heart and the heart to have a, a warmth within it inshaAllah and uh, we'll reply to you through the email inshaAllah, more specific than a general audience inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Shaykh Walaykum as salaam wa Sidi, why when making dua you keep the ring finger and middle finger connected of both of the hands and not the other fingers? Huh? Why what? Why do you connect the, the, the two fingers? The Which finger? Like the this? The ring finger and the middle finger? Yeah. Ring finger, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there must be a reason, huh? But yeah, there's a different energy in the hands, right? And there's a different coating in the hands, so the energies they feel from their hands then there has a, a, a reality for them, inshaAllah. But the main thing is that you read the article on the hands and the importance of the hands. Allah made the hands to have a code and so the purpose of wudu is one by washing and rubbing you're activating, you're activating codes and ismullah and isma, uh, isma Rasul wasallam. all of these are being activated upon insan. And that activation is an energy and a light for them so that to protect them and has many blessings that when we're servant is making wudu and, and washing, all these energies are being acted and activated upon them. That's why when Muslims were going around in the dark ages, they were teaching the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims were doing surgeries and killing everyone. As soon as they opened somebody and did some sort of medical procedure, they died of bacterias and all sorts of difficulties. 
And the Muslims came to them and taught them that you have to wash and as a result of washing there's a tremendous blessings and when these hands are blessed and begin to do work people can be healed. But if you put your negative energy into somebody you've opened or, or doing a medical procedure they're going to become sickened by your energy. So as a result they picked up, they make the wudu and they make it exactly as, as they were taught. And then that became the norm and the Muslims forgot about it. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basir surat al Fatiha.